hasn't been a new bond market. There hasn't been there hasn't been a new asset class since the bond market in 1693. Well, now there's a new asset class, and it is in fact the digital asset space. The question is, are you participating? What is going on, guys? It is the Crypto Siege with another day in the life and the crazy life that is the digital asset space. Good afternoon. Happy Sunday to you. Where's my wrench? <laughs> What's going on, my friend? Good afternoon. Yeah, that's right. I wanted to get on here earlier. I just could not get it done. I'm getting everybody up for during their lunchtime hours. <laughs> That's okay. Omo, Omo Rose. What's going on, Omo Rose? How are you? Hope I'm saying that right. Yeah, happy Sunday. Yeah, this is an interesting article. I was going to go over that as well, but uh, I got to tell you, um, I saw something on BK's uh, stream earlier today that... Uh, um, who shared it with him? Uh, Coin Gecko? Is it Coin Gecko? I don't want to say it's Coin Gecko. God, I forget the guy's name. Uh, gosh, anyway, big time community uh, member and a long time community member. And uh, Sir Gordon Gecko, that's it. <laughs> Sir Gordon Gecko. I tell you what, I watched that video. I found it on YouTube. I watched that thing. Very, very compelling. It feels as though either the channel guy has a podcast and someone called in or the guy who has a channel just recorded the audio from a pod, from a podcast. I can't remember. I don't know which one it is, but it's very, very interesting and very, very telling. It's a, a guy who called in. Uh, he sounds a lot like uh, my guy who is in fact the FX space, the foreign exchange space. I'm going to share that with you guys, just in case you didn't, you didn't catch that video. Very, very interesting. I'm also going to share a lot of stuff from uh, my Patreon group that I am a part of, which is um, from XRP Darren, Darren Moore's Patreon group. I'm a first time catching the live, uh, always listening to you. Oh, very cool. Well, I appreciate you being here. Thanks for checking in on a Sunday. Dubian 2 is in, is in the building. What is going on, Dubian 2? How are you, my friend? XRP Boxer, what's good, bro? Yeah, so I'm going to share that video as well. Got some real, like, a lot of good stuff to share from XRP Darren Moore. I got to tell you, the guy is just, he he is great at doing a deep dive and something, finding some information. Um, the video that Sorg Gordon Gecko shared with BK, and BK shared it on a stream, I think this morning, uh, is just really kind of a confirmation of where we've always been. Uh, if we're paying attention to what's going on, if we're, if we're uh, you know, watching our investment and, and kind of putting things together, we all know, um, you know, where we're headed. It's just a matter of whether or not you choose to believe it is really the, ultimately the question is if you choose to believe it or not. Devon Steve is in the building. What's up, Devon Steve? Man, life is great. Life is great, brother. Spanish fly. How are you, miss? Good to see you in the stream. So we're going to cover, uh, going to cover this uh, article here. It is uh, Ripple XRP should get hold of the derivatives market to get investors screaming. <laughs> uh, it's from uh, the currency uh, analytics.com and it's by Maheen Hernandez. Going to talk with you guys about that. Uh, going to share this video here. Uh, this guy's uh, YouTube is liability mate. And again, I don't know if it's him and he has a podcast and he just upload, uploads, uh, uploads uh, stuff to YouTube or if he just, you know, kind of captured a certain part of the uh, of a podcast and, you know, put a video together around that. But uh, so, and Gekko, so Gordon Gecko uh, definitely turned the community on to this one. This is a really great find. I'll share that with you guys also. There are some tweets from Mark Phillips, who has just been doing his thing. Um, the digital asset investors shared something uh, 
uh, which is a, is a great, great tweet. I'm going to go over that tweet as well. Uh, Wrath of Khan Man or Khan Man. Yep. Another great tweet as well. Uh, this is something from 2013, but uh, man, I didn't realize Maxine Waters has been doing her thing for a while, huh? <laughs> oh, the chairwoman, Maxine Waters is going to share that. Interesting, a uh, little quick article, G7 finance leaders agree on coordination for global recovery, for a global recovery, global recovery. Uh, something that I, another thing that I got from um, Darren Moore from being in his Patreon, the Saudi G20 presidency and the Bank for International Settlements into Innovation Hub invites global innovators to find solutions to the most pressing financial, regulatory, and supervisory challenges. We'll go over that just a little bit. This is uh, the Financial Stability Board. You know, BK shares this a lot on a stream. And uh, um, I thought that, okay, there's the date. It is from April of 2020. Addressing the regulatory, supervisory, and oversight challenges raised by global stable coin arrangements. Very interesting PDF. I'm going to go over that as well, but I really do want to talk about, uh, uh, we're talking about, you know, we're talking about the debt. We're going to share that, but there's something that I think is really more and more important than that. Let me uh, uh, see. Yeah, do this. Get back here. So we're going to talk about that a little bit as well. Like and subscribe, says XRP Boxer. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, I know I'm catching you guys. Gibson Centene in the middle of lunch and stuff, but I wanted to get this uh, wanted to get this video done today. I, I could not get on yesterday. I wanted to, but I just could not do it. RB, hey, everyone. What's going on, my friend? So, I mean, I think it's very, very interesting that this is going uh the whole debt situation is going on and, you know, we're talking about the debt and, and the debt jubilee. BK talks about the debt jubilee all the time. My question is, uh, you know, wh whatever we do, you know, whether we moon, whether there's a debt jubilee, which probably is not going to include the average Joe and Jane, right? So us, you know, I'm not sure if we're going to be included in some kind of debt jubilee. I just don't believe that at all to be the case. Whether or not the debt, whether or not the dollar is going to be continued to be devalued, and whether or not it is going to lose its world reserve currency status, in the end, what ultimately matters is what you and I are doing with our finances and how do we um, essentially become our own banks instead of having to rely on other banks. Ultimately, that is the deal. And uh, I'm going to share the video uh, that Sir, Ge Sir Gordon Gecko shared with the community. And, but I got to tell you, there's one statement in there that I found to be very, very interesting. The whole Libra thing, uh, a, a lot of what the Libra thing was about is about corporations wanting to get into banking. Now, why do you think corporations want to get into banking? <laughs> Ever think about that? Uh, you know, I've been reading a book. I've been reading tons of book on um, the infinite banking concept and uh, becoming your own bank. And I got to tell you, it's a significant, significant thing. Ultimately, ultimately, if you can't get there, when moon won't really matter because you're gonna lose a lot of what you have by participating in, in other people's binance, uh, banking systems. That is ultimately the real deal. And so we all, you know, in my humble opinion, you certainly gotta make do your own homework, do your own due diligence. Uh, but for me, Miss Crypto Seeds, this is exactly where we're moving into becoming our own banks and doing our own banking. I just saw that a good friend, uh, uh, a good friend of mine, a uh, big time marketer um, has been doing this for years. I hadn't even know, I didn't even know. And it's so very, very weird. Uh, some people call it cash flow banking. I didn't even know it. Didn't even know he was doing it. 
Yeah, 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 it's crazy. It is really, really crazy, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out on a, on a, on a I don't know where it's raining here where we are. Um, a rainy Sunday afternoon. We are, we're supposed to have some people come by and look at the lawn and gardening and stuff like that, but I don't believe they did. Maybe they didn't come by because it is rainy. <laughs> so we missed that shot yesterday, but we couldn't get it done yet. So we had two, we had a bunch of business stuff to get uh, to get done. So guys, listen, the market is doing its thing. Let's talk about that. BTC is doing its thing. It was over 9,000 at one point. It was over 9,000. DIY investing says he, he's looking for it to get to 10. He believes that it's still going to get up to 10 or he believes that it's going to get up uh, to 10,000. Let's see what's going on in Binance. Let's see where the markets are right now. Hope you guys are, again, realizing how blessed you are to be. Oh, now wow, it's below. It's 8,800. Okay. To be... Uh, an early adopter in this new asset class that is the digital asset space. I hope you don't take it for granted. I hope you don't overlook it. I hope you don't think that it's a small thing. It is a massive, it is a massive, massive thing. It really is. And it's not really so much which digital assets that you hold, um, you know, because the top 10 are going to do well in the short to medium time frame anyway. Uh, without question. Now, everybody's on this Stella Lumens and you know, if Stella Lumens, for me, if Stella Lumens is going to be on the domestic front, although it could be international, if Stella Lumens is going to be on the domestic front and XRP is going to be on the international front. So I'm, I'm thinking, all right, cool, Stella Lumens, right? If, it's, if it does this thing for people who hold it, I'm excited for you. I really, really am. But it's, it's, I, what I look at it is it's one country. And XRP is going to be internationally for tons of countries. It's just, to me, there's a better value add in XRP. You know, for me, me and Miss Crypto Siege, we would rather diverse and uh, uh, diversify into other digital assets doing their own things, right? Because Stellar Lumens is, is, you know, technically it's, it's, in, it's in the payment space. Right, it's not in the uh, uh, digital identity space. It's not in the um, medical space. It's it's not in the supply chain space. You know, I mean, essential is in the payment space. So, um, and to me, there's just one winner there, ultimate winner that will provide me more value. You know, the greatest value, right? You know, um, and I, I liken I liken um, Stella Lumens a lot to Zilliqa, in that uh, you know Zilliqa, it's you know it's going to do its it'll probably do its thing in 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 Singapore, right? The monetary authority system out there is um, seems to be very very favorable towards Zilliqa and what they're doing, but it, it feels like Zilliqa is going to be in a country. Right, it has a chance to be in this particular country, that's Singapore, and Lumens may have a chance to do his thing here in the states, but you know neither one of those are internationally positioned to be the one internationally. So my thing is, you can have one country, or you can have fifty countries. You can have one country, you can have a hundred countries. You can have one country, or you can have one hundred and fifty countries. Right, so. That's kind of my thing there that, you know, for me, right? For me and Miss Crypto Siege. Pawan G, what's going on, my friend? Good to see you in the stream today. Are you checking in, really checking in from India, my friend? Pawan G, that is outstanding to see you here. So that's kind of why I am with that. But guys, let's share this video in case you guys did not see this video. Diving deep. What's going on, my friend? Good to see you. Just in case you didn't see between 11th and 22nd of this month, the world will change forever. How about that, Diamond D? I'm looking forward to that change. I'm looking forward to that change because I, 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 you know, I did homework for years and decided to take the fiat, that dirty, nasty fiat, and put it into the digital asset space. I'm excited about that. 
because I think what's going to happen for May going forward is going to be massive for those who are early adopters in this space. And don't forget, guys, even if, if you've gotten this thing six months or less, do not panic. It's not over. It's just beginning. It's just beginning. So you're not late. This is a new asset class. It, you're, it, we're just beginning. So you're not late. You're not late. You know, you, you know, you know, our thing here in the, in the crypto sieges household is what's going to be that next XRP? What's going to be that next without question? And it's in its space, right? And what I mean by that is um, uh, um, got, a, got a, a good corporate behind it, right? You got a CEO and got some people behind it, right? Um, got some people outside of the blockchain space investing in it, partnering with, with it, working together with it, and has real world use case. What's going to be that next one? And so trust me when I tell you, XRP is at 20 something cents. This is a digital asset with those three attributes. That's less than a penny. You know what I mean? For me, so that's the next thing. You know, I'm, we're betting on VeChain. We're betting on VeChain. You know, we are betting on VeChain. You know what I mean? I, I feel like, uh, you know, uh, Anyway, I got. I have. To, we have to do more of a V chain. Not doing enough. RB. Speaking of India, get some Matic people. Yeah, how about that, RB? Big EXRP crypto brother. <laughs> Greetings, Cryptoverse. What up, Siege? What's going on with you, Big E? Big EXRP. Good to see you on the stream, brother. Where are you checking in from, Big E? <clears throat> Let's go over this video. Let's go over that. So to me, these, these are things that, you know, that's why we have Wealth Wednesdays every single Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time is, is, is to remind us that we're early adopters in the digital asset space is to talk about generational wealth strategies. And again, one of those generational wealth strategies is becoming your own bank, understanding that concept that you don't have to go to Toyota, Toyota.com, Honda.com. <laughs> Roy's, Roy's, uh, Roy, uh, Rose Royce of whatever. You don't have to go to Jaguar Leasing or Porsche.com. Right? You could be your own bank when, when you get that and the power behind it. Uh, yeah, it's massive. I hear that. Devon C says, I hold a small bag of cell them in case it matures before XRP. <laughs> Just as a bit, just as a bit of a side bet, really. If it goes to a dollar, then that'll do. I hear you, right? And what's what is Stellar Lumens trading for nowadays? I don't even know. I, I don't have it in my uh, hollow chain. Is up my crazy? And a hollow chain might be might make it right. What in the world? What is XLM at right now? I don't even know. I don't even have it in my favorite. Oh, there it is. It is trading at seven cents. So seven cents now. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's less than 10 cents. Oh, yes, brother. Pawanji is checking in from India. Oh, wow. Well, I appreciate you being here, brother. Big time. It's great to see that you are, hopefully you're shedding the word, uh, shedding the word. Hopefully you are spreading the word about the digital asset space. I know it's tough, but I hope that you are. I hope that you're letting your friends and family know that it's an entirely new asset class being created and that it is the digital asset space. All right, let's share this video with you guys, just in case you didn't hear it. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do, okay, last time I didn't do that and the sound worked perfect, so I'm not gonna do it this time. Uh, is it this one? Yes, let me get back here. Again, this is like a guy calling in type deal to a podcast. You know. It's so hard to believe anything anymore because they 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 pumped us 
full of so much BS that it's it's getting very crazy. Let's take Leonard in Washington. Greetings. Hey, how's it going? Um, I wanted to call attention to the uh, the trade deal that uh, Trump is talking about. Um, he says it's going to go down in three phases. And if I could just read a couple of points that he made, yeah, uh, it'll go along with uh, what I'm trying to talk about. Uh, Trump says before you had to do certain things that made it very difficult for banks to really go into China. China has been opened up now for the first time to financial services, big banks, credit card companies, and we have a complete agreement on that. He says that makes me very, that makes me that makes me very leery with the social credit score and everything else. Right, right. It's going to get better. So listen to this. So uh, for on forex and technology, we didn't previously include this, but a lot of things have happened in the last 12 months. An agreement is included in this deal. Currency foreign exchange will be covered in its entirety in phase one, which he plans to have agreed in four to five weeks. Here's the, the big one, though. The Forex exchange aspect of it is a lot more complete now than it would have been under the other system. Don't forget a lot of things have happened with currency and foreign exchange that we weren't talking about a year ago. Now, I've, I've called in a couple of other times before this talking about, uh, you know, blockchain and yeah. where yeah. all this is going. Yeah. So, you so know, hey, wait, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. The SWIFT whole, the whole SWIFT thing, that kind of brought that to my mind with what with, with you were just reading and where that's going to go. Right. So what is SWIFT? SWIFT uses, they will be using blockchain technology that is, uh, partnered with, they use the Cordis Settler, which is part of R3, which is consortium of banks. R3 uses XRP for settlement. R3, it's, it's a rumor that R3 and RIP was just bought out by Ripple. It's a rumor that hasn't been announced yet. I don't know if it's true, but from what I'm hearing, that's what happened. Now, on top of all of this, uh, trade war talk and the going back and forth, you have Ripple meeting with the highest uh, members of the Chinese financial sector, <laughs> and they're establishing an office in Shanghai. And so, check this out. I heard I heard Libra today. I just heard that's going belly up and everybody's pulling out of it. Absolutely. That was all that was, was because you had uh, these corporations that you know, wanted to get into banking to be able to do that. It basically scared, you know, all of these guys to get on board with this new system that's coming out. And it, I'm, you know, could be, I think it's, you know, a good chance it happens this year, you know, at the latest, maybe quarter one, but it's, it's going to be backed by gold. They're going to, it's going to be digitized gold. You're going to, it's, there, we have a liquidity crisis coming. If you look at, you know, prior on the Ripple website, they offered three services. You know, there was X Current, which was kind of a stepping stone using fiat. As you went up the ladder, you know, they you get introduced to using uh, their their liquidity tool, which is called X Rapid, that uses XRP. Well, they just scrapped that whole thing. So if you go to their website. You'll see it's called on-demand liquidity, okay? This and is what they're going to... Hold on a second. And then you've had all this pumping into the system over the last, what, month? Hundreds of billions, 45 billion Hundreds. a day or something. Yeah. Yeah, and it's and been they, a, they, it's they, Look at this. Look at this. At the top of Zero Hedge, central bank issues stunning warning if the entire system collapses, gold will be needed to start over. And then people are talking about gold getting moved onto military bases. It's pretty wild. Right. And you had Judy Shelton, who was uh, named to the Federal Reserve uh, Board of Governors, who is a uh, advocate of a modernized gold standard. This is what's being hashed out behind the scenes and I I think all the rest of this crap is smoke and mirrors in 
and this is what you know they're going to roll out. I think it'll be some, you know, either the I, there's the IMF is involved, there's the Asian Investment Instru- uh, Infrastructure Bank, and you have the Bank of International Settlements. And I think what's going to happen is that you're, you'll have, you know, this you know, super national agency that will be overlooking this this uh, new system. Like I said, they, they use the meme or, you know, level playing field. Everywhere you go when you look into this stuff, this is that was coined by Brad Garlinghouse at, at Ripple, and all the little minions out there are just repeating it. And so I mean, let me ask you this. No one sees what, it. What's, the, what's the feeling in your gut going to be for the regular old American like you or I? Haircut on our, our currency? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I do. I, I think uh, you're going to see, uh, I think what they're figuring out now is uh, the dollar's not going anywhere. It's just not going to be the medium for international exchange anymore. And I think, uh, you know, it, we're going to, yeah, take a haircut. I think it's going to be pretty bad for, you know, average Joe. It's not going to, and it's not going to turn out well for him. So that was a uh, really, really, really um, telling video. XRP Joe, what's going on, brother? Good to see you. Guys, make sure you go check out XRP Joe on YouTube. He's doing his thing over there. XRP Joe says, this soundbite is insane. Thanks, Siege, for saying that. Absolutely, brother. That is why we are here. That's rumor kicking 23. That it's a rumor on the streets. R3 bought by Ripple. That's a rumor on the street. This is what he, this is what this guy is hearing. But there has no been no confirmation of that. It it one hundred percent makes sense, and it it, it, it look um, R three is uh, um, they're not cash rich, right? So they're not in you know they're not in the black, right? So they're not. You know, they're a company, a growing company trying to do its thing. But they're not, uh, you know, they don't have the, the, the cash, right? They're not, not, not necessarily in profit mode, if you will, right? They're a company trying to do its thing, trying to make its mark. And uh, so it would make sense for Ripple to, to do it in all kinds of ways, right? Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that R3 uh, is no longer in business. It means now that they got, you know, they got the fine, they'll have the financial backing for them to continue to do with their software and platform. And they'll be able to do it and be able to probably do better because now they've got this financial backing behind them. So it makes a hundred, one hundred and, you know, it makes a lot of sense. And listen, you know, they, they, they got some people invested in them. I believe that Mr. Yoshi Taka Katao, correct me if I'm not wrong, wrong. But I believe he's the number one stakeholder in there. I think, I think he is in R three. You know, so uh, I think, you know, 10 percent, maybe more, in R three. So it would make sense for Ripple to do it, but I don't know that it's. Uh, I don't know that it's been done. It would be great to hear the announcement. D Daniels is in the building. What's going on, my friend? Wow, how are you doing, my brother? Outstanding. Life is great. Life is great. Like I gotta tell you, we're blessed, D. Daniels. We're blessed. Ann Hill's here. What's up, my XRP fan? What's up with you, Ann Hill? Crystal John, good day, everyone. From South Africa. I love it, man. I love it. Got someone in here from India. Got someone in here from South Africa. I love it. Good to see you, Crystal John. I hope that you are sharing the word about this new asset class that's being created right underneath our very noses. I hope you're sharing it and letting people know. Can you imagine being an early adopter in an entirely new asset class? Being first, having, you know, first movers advantage in this space is crazy. Big E is checking in from Dallas. How about that? Love Dallas, bro. Love, love Dallas. Love, love Dallas. Big face, no cap. Brooklyn's in the building. What's up, big face? 
Estonia, Neuron79, uh, you're checking in from Estonia. Wow. What time is it in Estonia right now, Neuron79? Spanish fly. I'm waking up rich in D. I believe that's what is, is going to be. That's right. Looking good, doing it. Looking good, doing it. What's up, my friend? The big distraction is the beer cold scenery without question. That is the big distraction. That's the reason for them to put in this new system, this new quantum financial system. I believe uh, real time payments is going to be a real thing. The tier one banks have got, the, got it up and running, prepared for when they do uh, flip this switch. Don't, you know, you know, listen, the new financial system is a big deal. Ripple and XRB part, being part of it is just part of it. It's part of it. And it may be a major part of it, but it's part of it. It's a new financial system that's going to take place. And um, whether we do a debt jubilee or not, the question is, is are you going to be prepared for the new financial system? And my thing is if the dollar loses value, here's the thing that's, here's that kind of very, 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 very tricky thing. Everyone's excited, anticipating, you know, win moon. And what if you trade the more valuable asset for the less valuable asset? In other words, what if the digital asset is the more valuable thing in the fiat it is a secondary, it's secondary. You know what I mean? Now, here's the challenge. If, if you take the fiat dollar and you make a purchase on something, cool. But if you, if you ultimately end up with fiat dollars and the digital asset is really the thing that's more valuable, that's not cool. So that's the thing that you know, we ask a lot on the channel is how much of your win moon are you going to put back into the traditional market? That is the fiat market. All the financial interest today are based upon the fiat currency. Like how much are you gonna put there? And if you put it in there, where are you gonna, where are you gonna put it? Right? Real estate will be tokenized. And so is um, uh, precious metals, gold and silver will be tokenized. But if you're in a freaking index fund, if you're in a, uh, an ETF, right? If you got all your money tied up in the 401k, those aren't tokenized. Those aren't gonna be tokenized in my opinion, at least not yet. So my thing is how much of that win moon are you gonna put to the digital, I mean, into the, how much of that win moon money are you gonna keep in the digital space? Me and Miss Crypto Siege, 75% to 80% will, will remain in the digital asset space. Because you guys got to make your own decisions. You know what I mean? Got to make your own decisions about that without question. Jonathan Vincent, what's up, brother? What's good? What's good with you, Jonathan? D. Dan says, oh, hi, I hope I can retire. Yeah. I hope you can too, bro. Crawfish is in the building. What's up, Crawfish XRP? You snuck in on me, bro. Good to see you. Bahamas. Okay, the Bahamas is in the building. Oh, nice. Oma Rose. Bahamas is in the building. Very nice. We were just there on vacay, as a matter of fact. Paper Gang TV is checking in from Greenville, South Carolina. How about that? Love Greenville. Been there a number of times, number of times. I agree, Spanish Fly. Spanish Fly is talking to D. Daniels, but uh, and telling him, I believe the real fireworks with price will take place during quarter four of 2020. I agree. It's always the lat that latter part, right? You know, starting September. I agree with that as well. Um, listen. Uh, the Donald and what he's looking to do uh, with President Xi is, trust me, it's the trade thing is just one thing. Now, 
Here we go again, talking about tariffs again on China. Right? Um, the Dono is saying that he, he might not address 20, uh, he might not address the global debt this year. I think this year, not this year, just presidency, or I don't even know when it's over, <laughs> right? He said he might not address it. He said he's not going to address it. He said, he said if reelected, I'll look into it. That's politics to me. That statement is, is, is completely politics to me. You know what I mean? Uh, the nappy growing. Well, thank you for the super chat, bro. I appreciate that. We're going to be rich, brother. Indeed, we are. And never ever forget this, guys. Listen, I don't know which uh, bull market this is for you. Is this your first one? The one that's about to happen? It, will that be your first one? Is that your second one? Here's the thing that I know. There are going to be other bull markets. There are going to be subsequent bull markets. So don't, don't forget, man, we're early, right? We're early in this game. Uh, there's going to be plenty of opportunities uh, for bull markets. Plenty of opportunities for bull markets. Thank you so much, being happy, Corona. I appreciate that. We are, you know, here's the deal, though. Uh, I, I saw Robert Kiyosaki, it was one of his, one of his more famous um, quotes where he talks about rich and wealth. Rich and wealth, rich and wealth, rich and wealth. If you have a million dollars, you're rich. But if your cash flow in and out is 100000 a month, then you only have 10 months of wealth. 10 months of wealth. It's a very important thing to consider and think about. What's your wealth like? What's your wealth status? That's why we talk generational wealth every single Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Because if you don't have a wealth system in place like infinite banking, concept if you don't have that in place right so being rich is cool one million cool five million cool but if your cash flow right if if your lifestyle is a kind of a hundred thousand dollar month thing then you have 10 months of wealth and you, you get what i'm saying it's about your wealth got to pay more attention to what really is going on with your wealth. And one of the ways that you can do that is to be take control of your banking situation. Did you guys notice in that video? He said the whole thing with Libra was corporations were wanting to get into banking. What is your banking situation? Everyone's in the banking business. We're all in it. We're all in the banking business, but we either in our own banking business or we are in someone else's banking business. I got to tell you, I got a call with another. I think this is the third person, May 6th. I don't know if I can wait to May 6th for this call. I got to tell you, I don't know. Because I'm just, I just, I'm so, I'm chomping at the bit to just get and get this done and get it started so I can start sharing with you guys. T Dan said, so I will retire. Who's, who, who's muted? Can you guys not hear me? You're playing the video? I'm playing a video still? Hold on a second. I've been talking this whole time. No, I'm not playing a video. Oh, Mark, you, uh, you're probably catching it. It's the lag on it, I guess. Okay, we can hear you. Okay. Mark Chow, you probably were catching kind of the lag on that. Rich Dad Podcast, YouTube, all of it is awesome, Jonathan Vincent. You're a thousand percent correct. Elizabeth is in the building. What's up, Elizabeth? What's up, Elizabeth? How are you, miss? Okay. Yeah, because Mark said something about you're playing the video. I'm like, hmm. Jonathan's like, I'm going to Bora Bora on XRP and B-Chain Moon. I hear you, bro. Got to take care of you. I'm glad to hear you got some B-Chain too, my dude. I'm really glad to hear that. My thing is, how much of that stuff are you going to put into the digital, I mean, into the uh, traditional finance, man? How much of that money are you going to put into the traditional? I mean, they, they got uh, 
they got uh, something, was it Traveler, Travelo, Traveler, but they got a couple of travel things now in the digital asset space where you can, you know, you can pay for this stuff with your digital assets. Because my fear, one of my fears is that fiat will become uh, um, the secondary uh, platform, right? There's gonna, I believe there's gonna be more valuable in the digital asset than in fiat. Don't know when that's gonna take place. I do believe that one XRP is gonna be massively valuable. It's gonna hold massive value. I heard BK this morning talk about value add. You know, one of the most important value adds is your economic value add for yourself and your family. What's your economic value add, your EVA? This is the uh, wealth, right? Generational wealth advisors, right? They talk about economic value at your EBA. What does that look like? Von Hurdle, Von underscore Hurdle, how are you, my friend? So will you cash out 20% if it moons? What about EOS? Hey, from Nova Scotia, Canada. Nova Scotia, Canada, how about that? Good to see you, Von. Good to see you in the stream. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's essentially what it is, right? So we got, you know, we got the um, um, cash out points for, uh, you know, what we want to do here, you know, just little stuff, right? 50 grand, put it there, take care of the situation, 100 grand, take care of that situation. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, I want to earn assets on my assets. I want to earn Bitcoin on my Bitcoin. I want to earn ETH on my ETH. I want to earn XRP on my XRP. Ultimately, that is the game plan. And in addition to that, in addition to that, be, be my own banker, right? Because the fiat dollar is going to be around. It's just, it, I don't know if its value will remain. It'll be around, but will its value remain? In other words, is it going to be a currency or currencies that are more valued above the fiat currency? Like, Will the central bank digital currency, will the digital dollar be more, will be, will it be worth more than their fiat dollar? Right? If the fiat dollar is a dollar, will the digital dollar be a dollar and 10, dollar 50? That's the thing. Mark Wilgus is here, says derivatives will be the biggest driver of XRP price and Ripple is going after it with Codius and PolySign. Good to see you, Mark. Haven't seen you in a while, bro. Good to see you in the stream. That's the thing. Let's go over this article now that you mentioned derivatives. It's an interesting read, you know, but we'll go over it real quick and talk about that as well. Then I want to talk a little bit about this, the, this whole debt situation. <laughs> Uh, Spanish fly is doing her thing here. Look at Spanish fly says, I have mapped out a two year living expenses plan so I can hold out and take larger cash outs in 2022. That's a great, very, very smart plan. Yeah, because I always taught cash flow, like, you know, you know, the reason why we're able to we were able to invest the way we're able to invest in the digital asset space is because we had a cash flow business, right? That stuff's just spitting out cash, right? So we have this asset that's spitting out cash that allows us to invest, right? The biggest challenge is a lot of people don't have a cash flow business, and so they're taking from their normal lifestyle income, right, and trying to get into the space. That's very very challenging. It's hard to do because you end up, you know, you end up with, you know, having to just, you know, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 250 bucks. And, hey, listen, if you got to do it that way, you got to do that way. But ultimately, uh, if that's where you are, that's where you are. But there's always cash flow situations, always opportunities to build, create an asset that's spitting off cash so that you can better perform, better invest into the space, right? But I love that Spanish fly, two-year living expenses plan. So she's got her expenses set 
for a certain point that she can hold off on the cash and out, right? And that's what we have, right? We got this cash flow coming in. There is no need for, uh, um, you know, uh, there is no dire need for a million or two million or five million, right? You know, the, the only thing we're going to do is create more cash flow with a couple of cash outs, 50 grand cash out, 100 grand cash out to create more cash flow, right? To create more cash flow. That's the truth. And then in addition to that, now we're going to do, what, you know, our own banking thing. We're going to become our own banker so that we save on taxes, save on interest. Again, that's, and grow your wealth at the same time. It's a brilliant system. Bon Hurdle, thank you for the $20 super chat, my friend. I appreciate that big time. Appreciate you being here all the way from Nova Scotia, Canada. <laughs> I hear that, Elizabeth. That's, it. that's very smart. It's very, very, very smart. You gotta control your spending uh, I'm a big advocate in addition to control and spending is increasing the cash flow. got to increase your earnings, right? Because in order to do that, uh, quite honestly, you have to become a better version of yourself, right? You got to increase your skill asset, right? You got to, right? You got to develop more skills as my mentor would say, right? Develop more skills. Don't wish for less problems, right? Wish for more uh, um, skills, right? Don't wish for less challenges, wish for more, right? Wish for more for you to get better, right? But don't wish for less challenges, wish for more skills, wish for more wisdom, right? So you gotta get better, right? And so it's not, you know, uh, Gary Gunnison is big on, he, he doesn't like that, you know, that's living less thing, right? He's, he's really big on how can I increase my skill set so that I can create a, a cash flow for me and my family. That's what I, and I love doing that. I had to stop my cable and my car. I gave back. It's called sacrificing. Yeah, I hear you. I had to hear you. I hear you. I hear you, G. I hear you, bro. Let's go over this article. It's a very interesting article about the derivatives. This, again, this is a dude's opinion, but I understand. Let's do this uh, over here. Right, right here. Let me show, make sure that share worked. Yeah, do me a favor, guys. If you didn't get a chance to smash the like on the way in, just collapse the chat. No worries. And go smash the like, come back and hang out if you enjoy the hangout. You know what I mean? All right, let's go over this. Ripple XRP should, again, the currency analysis, uh, analytics.com, and this is from Mahin Hernandez. Ripple XRP should get hold of the derivatives market to get investors screaming. <laughs> <gasps> nice little diagram there at Ripple XRP, XRP derivatives. In response to a thought-provoking concept, why is there 100 billion XRP and not 21 million like Bitcoin? An XRP enthusiast replied, because there are 7.8 billion people in the world, 1.4 billion unbanked and underbanked, and 180 currencies in 195 countries. That's 12.6 XRP per person. Suddenly, 100 billion isn't much. Is it? What a question mark. SBI is accelerating their efforts to create a swap market to expand the actual demand for crypto assets. This is one of the important blockchain initiatives by SBI Group. Shout out to Mr. Yoshitaka Katao, perhaps the greatest fan ever of XRP. Crypto assets hedging is considered to be important in the process of swap trading to control the risk involved when handling crypto assets. SBI is set to create a banking service cloud in Japan in full swing by creating new entities. <laughs> Sumitomo Mitsui Financial Group, we all heard about them lately because they just big, uh, invested big time into money tap, has taken a stake in the SBI Holdings Company. This is great news because the swaps will deal with exchanges that are loaning 
XRP in another currency, which will be lower than what regular banks would offer in the same currency. Okay. It is expected that the demand is going to skyrocket from loan suppliers and from others who are shopping for similar loans. Ripple tweeted, the quarter one 2020 XRP markets report, and by the way, I went over that in a video. I hope you guys check that out offers a look at the current economic effects of the crypt on the crypto market and highlights a continued pause in programmatic sales, XRP sales, tracking of actual activity and the ODL momentum. Great read, guys. You definitely want to level up your XRP IQ. You definitely, definitely want to go over that Ripple Insights, ripple.com forward slide insights and go check that out. Okay, clarification. The XRP transaction volumes via RippleNet were up by 294% in the USD equivalent quarter one of 2020. It is expected that exchanges will become the biggest fan of XRP, according to an XRP community member. So this is Sydney Efragan, the crypto expert on tweet or Twitter tweeted, XRP derivatives are available in different exchanges, like Binance, Huobi, OKEx, AAX, and FTX. However, Ripple XRP has to get a hold of the derivatives market. XRP has the potential to increase the velocity and the value of money. Remember, Cryptopolis shared a little thing on Twitter about that. It is set to translate into great economic activity. There is a lot of speculation happening about XRP <laughs> getting used at some point in the future in several SBI processes. Make no mistake about it that Mr. Yoshitaka Katao plans on using XRP in as many ways as they possibly can. Make no mistake about that. SBI Holdings, and thank God May is here so they can move forward with these plans. SBI Holdings have announced the particulars of the shareholder benefit plan. Yeah, remember that? Okay, <laughs> so they're going to give you some XRP. You got a chance to get some XRP if you're a shareholder. The release states that shareholders will be able to receive XRP as a benefit payment if they choose to. Those interested will be receiving a coupon code, which they can use to obtain the token. I think it's pretty interesting. Shareholders who have been holding at least 100 shares and less than 1,000 as of March 31st, 2020, or more than 1,000 if held for less than one year, are eligible to decide if they are willing to receive 95 XRP. This is the equivalent to around 2,000 yen. So the derivatives market, we all know that SBI holding is in all, all kind of different financial platforms, derivatives, securities, right? The regular banking, right? They, they are in, the, he has his hands in everything. And in the places where he can promote and use XRP, the dude is going to do it, okay? The dude is going to do it. That is, those are the facts, as we like to say, and they are indisputable. That's what that dude is going to do. In, 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 in any and every place that he can use XRP, Mr. Yoshitaka Katao is going to use XRP. He is the biggest man ever. He gets it. He understands the value. He knows. So Captain Sticks is in the building. What's going on? Hello to you. I told eleven. I told people eleven months ago about a secret White House info leak about XRP and Stellar. So, Sir Captain Sticks, it was about XRP and Stellar. XLM was mentioned in that. And now it's unfolding. So was it, Sir Captain Six, was it XRP and Stenal Lumens or was it just XRP? M1 Geronimo's in the building. How are you, my friend? Doing outstanding, brother. Good to see you in the stream. Newell Jordan. Oh, hello, Newell. How are you? Newell Coaches. Every time I see your name, I think about the Newell Coach. Out in Ada, Oklahoma. My bank called, so Captain Six says, my bank called me wanting to know more about my income. Hmm. Must be scared of the wire I did to Coinbase 
for more XRP and stellar lumens. Ha ha ha. Wow, how about that? So the, 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 that info mentioned both, my friend? Because you said White House info leak, and it mentioned both, Sir Captain Six. Huh, that's cool. That is cool. Siege, I've had people say I'm crazy not to believe it, but I don't listen. I hear you, my friend. I listen. I'm a big fan. Obviously, you know, I am of XRP. I would like to see more stuff about Stella for me to, uh, um, more positive stuff about XLM. Like I, they got the Stella Foundation and they got the people from Zell now on this foundation, part of this foundation. But if there was something from the White House that I could see that had XLM in there, you know, that would, you know, that might cause me to do a little something more with Stella because I own no Stella. So Captain Six says Stella will be the digital dollar. Ripple will be the liquidity. Yeah, if I could see something, you know, any kind of White House stuff like that. I mean, like Executive Order 13772 mentions Ripple in there, right? It mentions the company Ripple, I believe twice, but right, mentions the company Ripple, right? We know that the people, XRP and Ripple, what they're doing, that's undeniable, right? I just, I'm, I don't know. I'm a Jed, Jed McCaleb scares me, so I just don't know. <laughs> Jonathan Vincent's like, get some Stella, bro, please. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, man. I don't know. We'll still have to see. Like, I have zero Stella. I just, I just don't know. I don't know. So let me share something from XRP. Darren Moore has just been doing his thing in his Patreon. A lot of great stuff there. Stella and Ripple are very deep into this shift. <laughs> Elizabeth said, Jed is slightly unstable, but most geniuses are. Very, very true. Was that the video we did this morning, uh, Sir Captain Sticks? Siege Digital Asset Investor shared a great info about Stella. Check it out. Was that from the video he did this morning, Sir, Sir Captain Sticks? I mean, I will check that out. I will definitely check that out. Let me go up. Uh, IBM Blockchain Worldwire's link to the ledger. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Jonathan. Let me go. Let me see what's up. I guess share some of this stuff here. <laughs> it came from Ripple. That's Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Co-founder, right? <laughs> Raj, Raj Paul said, at this point, I say buy every coin. <laughs> All right, let's check out some stuff. Shout out to Fane 21 more. This dude has been on some serious stuff, man. Let me see. This was a good video. Patrick Wood discusses new international economic order. The new international economic order with the XCIA, Tim Ship, and crypto assets. New International Economic Order. This was a good, it was a really good uh, video. Let me, I'm gonna share that with you guys. Let me get it up right though. 
but this is let me let me read this to you guys first. I think this is a really really important all things considered. Uh, do this, do this, do this. Make sure you got that first before I. Michael Oltu says, see, you get some Stella. Trust me, my wife did. Oh, wow, really? How about that? I'm going to check out, did, was that Digital Asset Investors video this morning? All right, so there it is there. Let me share this with you guys. Michael Otu, good to see you in the stream, bro. So this is from, again, this is from part of the Patreon group at uh, XRP Darren's Patreon. I love the information that he provides there. It says, banks are exploring DLT viability in use cases such as re reconciliations, e-voting, and inventory management. Some banks, including GB DBS, Deutsche Bank, there's this HSBC again, and Standard Charter, are collaborating with SWIFT on a blockchain proof of concept for e-voting, which subsequently will be phased to, to prove a hybrid approach of combining messaging and DLT to foster interoperability and avoid market fragmentation. SWIFT is doing some, you know, some interesting things with R3. The Italian Banking Association announced that the country's banks would be using DLT to run Reconciliations as of March of 2020, right? Very, very interesting thing to point out. So here, we moan, we mainly uh, we are mainly looking at fintechs that create value in client-facing activities. Currently, we are also focused on back-end processing to solve friction in cross-border payments and automation of processes. And this is from uh, a quote from a large domestic bank in Europe. <laughs> and, 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 and here's the whole PDF here, but I'm not gonna go through the whole PDF. So just remember, we are mainly looking at fintechs that create value in client-facing activities. I wrote down a quote from a video I'm gonna share the video with you guys, but it was essentially that the UN declares fintechs is the new financial system to support sustainable development. Fintechs is the new financial system to support sustainable development. In other words, fintechs are gonna lead the way in this new financial system. Let me share that video with you guys where that was stated. And this is from the, the UN is the one who declared this. Let me share this with you. Uh, you think about technocracy, especially in digital currency, international uh, digital currency. What do you think about that? Cryptocurrency, the Federal Reserve is talking about going to Fed coin and in terms of the international economic order, special drawing rights and others. Uh, how do you think digital currency fits into this whole plan? Well, <clears throat> this has been on the table for a long time. Uh, one of the chapters in my book, my latest book is called Fintech. Mm -hmm. That's as for financial technologies, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And <clears throat> incorporated into that is blockchain technology, as well as um, how that would apply to cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. Blockchain, however, uh, has many, many more applications than just currency. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of needs to be considered, it needs to be looked at as a, as a very broad area of. Sure. Um, of, of sure. fintech realm, <clears throat> but cryptocurrency, which is based on blockchain technology. Um, yep, right. What everybody knows about decentralized blockchain right now, which is Bitcoin and Ethereum and other you know, elements like that, um, 
they found very quickly that there are serious performance issues with having a distributed blockchain because it takes inordinate amounts of time to make a transaction to where the blockchain is then distributed. Now we all know which blockchains you're talking about there, right? They're talking about Bitcoins and Ethereum's blockchains, right? Because remember just what just recently happened, the massive delays and the high cost, right? Massive delays, high cost, 50% retracement. All, when all of that stuff happened on that, what they call quote unquote Black Thursday, there was only, there was one in the, in the, in the large market cap blockchains that had no flaws, no issues, no raising in fees. And that was the XRP L ledger. Trust me when I tell you that. When If we know that, we notice that, we peak that, as, as we like to say, then so did they. That's why we say on the channel, XRP is the champion, right? XRP is the champ. The champ is here, guys. Multiple places and some back and forth, whatever. <clears throat> and basically, like a peer to peer network, it simply just does not work. When it gets large enough, it simply mm -hmm. will not work. The central banks of the world, starting with the Bank for International Settlements, which I've mm -hmm. written a lot about historically, um, they have concluded that the way to use blockchain is to generate uh, blockchain transactions at the, and to use blockchain based currency as well. There's no problem with that. <clears throat> but every time there's a transaction, instead of storing the transaction in the cloud or in the blockchain, they will simply flash it back to a centralized database mm -hmm. where they will capture all the financial transactions that happen in the world. Yeah. Wow. Now, you can just imagine. I mean, this would be so easy to do. Yeah. A blockchain is just a very small transaction in a cell. So when you go and you buy $10 worth of gasoline for your car, if you pay for it with a, a card that... Uh, has a, a digital wallet in it. <clears throat> Your transaction is, in, you know, encoded to that wallet, and uh, then whatever type of Wi-Fi is available or 5G is available, whatever for transmission of that little transaction. Uh huh. Maybe it's maybe it's as small as 512 bytes. Oh, that's <clears throat> It goes back to the centralized database where it's just nice. Just nestled in there with all your other transactions for the last, you know, two years. Uh huh. Yeah, they have everything. They know more about you than you know about yourself. Yeah, yeah. Well, well put. They're also looking. Well, at <clears throat> yeah. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, uh, yeah. Just to say, fintech has has been declared by the United Nations, not by me. I would have done it anyway. But the United Nations has declared the whole area of fintech. And there's a lot more of what we're talking about, but the whole area of fintech <clears throat> as being the financial system to support sustainable development. Well, there that is. And can you, can someone name me? Can someone point out to me? So listen, the UN, the UN has declared that fintech is the new financial system to support sustainable development. In other words, long-term and growing. United Nations has declared that. FinTech, let me ask you something. Can you, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Spanish, I think I can. I think I can. Let me try that. Hold on. Sorry, let me, uh, Spanish fly asked me to share that. Let me see if I can share it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold uh, on. I hope this will work. I'm going to put this URL in here. Put this in here for you guys. I haven't even watched the whole video of Spanish Fly. I only watched like the first 10 minutes. Von Hertel says, XLM micro daily user, XRP large macro internet government movements of funds. Very cool, very cool. I wish I could get more info on Stella. I really do. Let me see if this is going to work. There it is right there, Spanish Fly. Hopefully that is the correct video URL. So can, FinTech now, can you guys tell me, 
can you point out to me a fintech company that has done anything remotely close to what Ripple, Ripple, the fintech company is doing in this new asset class that is the digital asset space. And if you can't, and if fintech is going to be, according to the UN, the new financial system to support sustainable development, that means that Ripple is all over it. Because as we know, they don't create, uh, not Ripple, but the powers that be, they don't go out and create things. They adopt things. They adopt things. I heard, uh, I got to tell you, Jonathan Vincent and the rest of you guys in the stream here, I heard, um, I'm beginning to learn more and more that Codius is a beast. Codius is a beast. It's a monster. Like that thing. I heard uh, Chris Lawson talking about Stefan Thomas and Evan Schwartz and what they did with that Codius. And I heard another guy saying something about it as well in the same interview. It's a monster. It did work. Okay, good. You know what I mean? So think about it. Yeah, I want to watch the rest of that too, Spanish Fly. I really, really do. But I got to hop off here. So I, I wanted to leave you guys with that. The UN declares FinTech is the new financial system to support sustainable development. And there isn't, I would humbly submit to you that there isn't a FinTech company in this space. It certainly is not R3. There isn't a FinTech company in this space that has the partnerships 300 plus that has the real world use case utility that has a spring that got coil that got forte there isn't a fintech company that is mentioned and brought up at the wef at the imf at the bis at the world bank at the un each and every single one of them have brought up have mentioned has exampled Ripple and XRP, not one. There hasn't been another one. I did see something from Fame 21 more with Stella in, in a, a particular um, chart diagram presentation was mentioned as well. But overwhelmingly, it has been Ripple. Don't know what's going to happen with ETH. It's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen with ETH. Maybe ETH, maybe Ethereum Spanish Fly will be able to kind of do something in their own, in their own lane, if you will, uh, because Codius is just, it's massive. The difference with Codius and ETH, and here's the thing that's really, really interesting, right? Codius is there. It, it, it's the thing that I think I think is is going to be a really, really important part is a project with a coin and a project without a coin. A project with a coin or a digital asset will allow us as, as investors to be able to profit from its value. Like R3, I, I don't know if S coin is R3, is that, a, is, is S coin a coin? I don't know. I like, I like, I don't know. ETH, but ETH is moving over to the proof of stake, Jonathan. They are transitioning. ETH 2.0 is going to be um, uh, that transition to proof of stake. I don't know if it's going to be fully or a hybrid but the, uh, of, of work and proof of stake. But it, ETH 2.0 is, is, is moving into the proof of stake space. They realize that the proof of work just doesn't work. Hawk and Samurai. Hey, Hawk and Samurai. Hi, Crypto Siege in the chat. I'm so late. We'll rewatch the whole one hour I miss. Absolutely, my friend. You're going to definitely enjoy it. <laughs> digital, digital validity is in the building. I used to drink uh, Corona, but now I drink Stella. Stella. So that's what I, that's what I would say. Um, ETH is going to 2.0. I, I think they're going to survive because they got so much money in there. Um, major players invested in it, 
Um, but Cody is <sighs> woo. And and Spanish Fly, while you're checking out that video, I'm gonna go check out DAI's video to see what he has to say about uh, maybe there's some new information about Stellar. I don't know. If so, you know, I, I don't know. I'll put five hundred thousand into it and see if it's you know viable. All right, guys, listen, I am going to wrap up this video. Don't forget that quote. It's massive. The UN declares that FinTech is the new financial system that will support sustainable development. We know that the champ, the ripple, is the ginormous behemoth in this FinTech space right now. Without question, it is the darling child. All right, guys, listen, thank you so much for hanging out on a Sunday. I definitely appreciate you guys being here. Do me a favor, smash the likes on the way out. We had over 70 people here, just 47 likes. Do me a favor, smash the like on the way out. It definitely helps on the YouTube algorithm without question. Guys, never ever forget this, that old money doesn't want you to win. They don't want us to win. They would rather us remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars. They don't want us to play in the same black, uh, same uh, playground that they play in, but we allow our money to work for us. This is our chance to win, guys. The digital asset space is our chance to win. We are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man. The question is, are you participating? Here's what I do know that the battle for you has already been fought and the victory is yours. Go get it. I'll talk to you soon, guys. See ya. Bye.